start, okay? Um, first of all, um, I would like to thank you, Dennis, um, for inviting me, and I'm really happy to share my work with you. And uh, to myself, so my name is Martin Franke, and I'm working in the lab of um, Professor Stefan Mundlos uh, at the Institute for Medical and Human Genetics at the Charité, and at the MPI for Molecular Genetics, uh, both based in Berlin. And the main work I did at the MPI. So, um, and I want to talk about my PhD project, I did it here, and uh, it's about the formation of uh, novel chromatin domains, or we call them uh, neotads. And um, this is a concept, and this concept helps us to uh, understand uh, the pathogenicity of, of genomic applications. So, during my talk, uh, I want to give you an overview, first of all, um, about the spatial organization of our genome, or of the vertebrate genome and the mammalian genome. Then I want to talk about uh, specific locus, and this is the SOX9 locus, and uh, I want to give you an overview about um, duplications that are associated with rare, rare diseases at this locus, and um, I want to give you then a um, mechanistic in science, uh, in science uh, uh, into the pathogenicity of, of the, those tunnel duplications. And at the end, I would like to present you um, our concept um, we generated from the study of these rare diseases. Um, yeah, but this concept we can apply uh, on a more uh, global global base, I think. Okay, um, first of all, um, um, traditionally, um, we tend to think about our genome uh, uh, in one or two dimensions, so uh, meaning uh, we have a stretch of uh, letters, so uh, the sequence of our genome, and we can easily identify um, genes and uh, associated regulatory elements uh, as, for example, enhancers. But um, in recent years, uh, it become more and more um, obvious um, that there is another level um, of uh, information encoded in our genome, and this is uh, our genome in 3D. And yeah, I also refer to this uh, uh, as chromatin folding. And this chromatin folding uh, is important for gene regulation. So and I depict this here in this picture. So what we see here, um, we have um, uh, uh, our, our favorite gene, and we know that there are uh, a lot of uh, remote or distally located enhancer sequences. And those uh, enhancer sequences um, have the endogenous uh, capacity to drive tissue-specific um, uh, expression, for example, um, in the spinal cord, in the somites, or in the forebrain. And um, uh, this regulatory information is transmitted um, via uh, chromatin DNA looping or, or via the 3D structure of our genome uh, to a transcriptional out output. So these DNA sequences are bound by transcription factors and we have different um, protein complexes in our, um, in our, in our nucleus and they uh, uh, bring these uh, enhancers in close proximity uh, to our gene. And this finally results, for example, for, it's important for developmental genes, so we can generate by integrating these different enhancers uh, to develop um, or to create a complex spatial temporal uh, expression patterns. So the three, these structure, um, or the DNA looping and gene regulation are closely uh, functional linked. And uh, in our lab, um, we use uh, the technique of uh, chromosome confirmation capture um, to assay these chromatin contacts in, in our nucleus. And uh, with this method, um, we, uh, it starts with the cross-linking uh, uh, of uh, DNA pairs. They come in close proximity, mediated probably uh, by proteins. Then by subsequently um, fragmentation of, uh, of, of the ends of these uh, um, uh, interacting DNA fragments, uh, and by a ligation step, we create one molecule that contains these two interacting DNA uh, sequences. And then after DNA purification, um, they are, this uh, technique of chromosome confirmation capture comes in different flavors. And uh, in my study, I used uh, 4CSEC and HiC or capture HiC. And with 4CSEC, um, we can simply ask the question, um, so it's a PCR enrichment uh, based method. So we ask uh, from a specific point uh, in our genome, what are the most frequent interaction partners? And this you can see here uh, in, these, um, in these tracks. So 
these triangles indicate uh, our region of interest. So we ask what are the most frequent in interaction partners with this gene A. So we place the viewpoint in the promoter and then we generate these nice interaction profiles with uh, peaks, potential enhancers and other um, regions of our genome. And here another track uh, in a promoter uh, of the gene A also give, gives us a, a nice interaction profile. So, um, but uh, a nicer way to, um, to visualize uh, chromatin interactions in the genome is uh, if you sequence just simply every, every, uh, every um, ligation partners in the genome, and this is done by, um, by HiC. So we sequence all ligation partners, and what we end up is a um, triangular matrix. So each uh, red dot corresponds um, to the interaction frequency uh, uh, of each point here uh, in this locus. Okay, um, and just uh, how we use these data and um, what's important, what people found out um, when they looked at HiC and also uh, at 4C, and they, they re uh, realized that our genome is uh, partitioned uh, in regulatory, regulatory units. And these are depicted here. So these, um, in these triangular structures uh, called uh, topological associated domains, um, these are domains with high internal interactions and these domains, so here TED A and TED B, they are spatially uh, separated. So interactions between these TEDs are very rare. rare. And, um, and these TEDs, um, a special feature um, of these, uh, these uh, TED structure in our genome is that um, we find uh, these uh, boundary elements and they are usually associated with CTCF sites. And um, yeah, uh, below the high C profile, you see uh, 4C sec profiles, and you nicely uh, see that these profiles or this interaction domain you get uh, nicely corresponds uh, to the stru cut structure here for gene A and here for gene, uh, uh, gene B and gene A. And here uh, on the right side, um, I depicted just uh, this is a model I, I, I will show it constantly um, in my uh, in the during the talk because it's easier to imagine. So um, this touch structure of or this compartment of TAT A, uh, all the sequences are in close proximity, and um, uh, in TAT A and TAT B, the gene is in close proximity, and between those TATs, um, there's rarely uh, there are rarely rare interactions. And with this knowledge, um, we can easily assign, um, if, we, if, we, uh, if you find an enhancer or so, you can easily assign this enhancer to its target gene. So um, it's most probably that this enhancer uh, is frequently interacts with gene A and is not able to interact with, uh, uh, with gene A. It's not, yeah, not able to interact with gene A, but is likely to interact with gene B. Um, and um, having this uh, concept um, of um, um, uh, functional and structural units uh, of our genome in mind, um, it's uh, easy to imagine that these uh, TATs are prone to, to genomic changes. And in our lab, we are studying structural variations, such as um, uh, deletions um, or inversions and, um, or duplications. And these structural variations are in general quite common in our genomes. So there are on, on the one hand um, drivers of, of phenotypic variations. And yeah, with whole genome sequencing and area CGH, um, they are also frequently diagnosed uh, in clinic, clinical settings and they are associated with congenital disease, intellectual disabilities, uh, uh, and, and cancer. And Martin? Yeah. Uh, one question. So um, the enhancer to gene connection is basically, um, if I understood it right, on physical distance, right? Physical distance, yeah, yeah. Um, by the frequency we see, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really not a, uh, trained in regulatory element biology, mm -hmm. but uh, is this um, always the case, or might um, be like other like long distance regulatory um, effects possible, which are not physically distant? Um, so uh, here I'm talking about uh, cis regulation. I mean. Um, I, I, yeah, I mean, classic, our classic view of our genome is that it's full of um, regulatory sequences and um, um, prerequisite that they have a function or that they functionally or that they have an impact on gene, regu uh, gene expression is that they need to get in close proximity to, to uh, I don't know, modify the uh, transcription rate of the polymerase, for example. So, okay, thank um, you. Yeah. Um, okay, and 
I just want to refer to one paper of our lab, and this was um, so. Yeah, first of all, um, um, uh, the problem is with uh, structural variations that they can have multiple effects, and it's really hard to predict uh, the the their the mechanism that uh, is disease causing, and this is due to, um, for example, I mean, copy number variations can can delete uh, uh, genes, for example, and maybe these genes are prone for um, they have a they have a dosage effect or they can just simply delete enhancers. But we also know that via deletions or translocations, we can also induce positional effects. So it's really hard sometimes um, to, to find um, the real underlying um, cause for, for disease. And in 2015, um, our lab um, presented uh, a paper where we studied um, deletions and inversions and their impact on touch structure and gene regulation. But I don't want to, I just want to refer to this. And, um, but now, um, uh, I want to come to uh, tandem duplications because uh, these are the structural variations that are, I think uh, are, are really um, hard uh, to interpret sometimes. And um, I want to introduce you now to the problem I was confronted in the beginning of my project. And this, these uh, were a, cur a curious case of tandem duplications at the SOX9 locus. So here you can see um, the SOX9 locus. Um, SOX9 is an uh, important developmental gene. It has uh, two important functions. One of them is um, its uh, gene dosage um, determines um, the sex in, in mammals. Um, so it's directly um, downstream of the SRY gene uh, on the Y chromosome. And then what is special about this locus is we have an almost two megabase uh, um, gene desert upstream of the gene, and then here on the left side or the Central America side, we have two potassium channels. Okay, and here, um, what I depicted here, um, these colored bars, are recurrent, recurrent uh, uh, duplications, tandem duplications we found at its locus. We find at its locus. And the color code um, now um, depicts um, three different phenotypes we see with, um, with these, associated with these duplications. And the first type here in blue, um, so you see the maximum extent of the duplications and then here uh, the minimal uh, region of duplications, of known duplications. And these duplications in blue, um, they are associated um, with uh, sex reversal, uh, female to male sex reversal. So um, female patients, they have uh, XX uh, genotype, but uh, they can develop a uh, completely to uh, can develop a complete uh, male phenotype or partial male phenotype. And uh, this is the only, yeah, this is quite isolated, so they suffer from nothing else. They have only the sex reversal. Then um, in our lab, or we uh, identified another uh, uh, type of duplications, and this uh, duplication um, extends a little bit further uh, to the central merit part, so includes a little bit more of non-coding sequences. Um, but um, uh, this family, so the mother and her daughter, they were just duplication carriers. They shaped, showed no um, sex reversal, no sex reversal phenotype, so they were perfectly fine. And then we found a, a third type, or we find a, a third type of duplications, and these are even larger. So they also include these two potassium channels. Uh, and there, on the other hand, uh, are not associated with um, sex reversal, but with a really specific um, skeletal phenotype. And this is uh, the so-called Cook syndrome. Um, it's uh, associated um, so with an absence uh, of the fingernails, uh, of, the, of nails of the fingers and, and toes. And they also have uh, a brachydactyly. So the middle phalange here uh, is missing. And yeah, so this was the starting point and it was really confusing in the beginning and very simple. So um, these duplications uh, are overlapping and all of them um, uh, increase the copy number of, an, of a region that is known in humans to be uh, associated with sex reversal. But only in some cases they induce sex reversal, in other cases they don't uh, induce any phenotype. And in other cases um, they are not associated with sex reversal, but uh, with the Cook syndrome. So, and this was the uh, starting point. And in the beginning, we didn't understand it. But um, the key uh, to understand these um, duplications was now to integrate um, the three-dimensional structure, so the touch structure uh, uh, of our genome. 
And um, yeah, you can use public high C, uh, C data. We uh, I also performed um, uh, capture high C data from fibroblast at this locus, and now you see this applications overlaid with the touch structure, and you can immediately spot uh, the difference between these um, uh, three types uh, of applications. And this is uh, you can uh, categorize them in two two types. Um, first, the blue one. These are duplications that uh, duplicate sequences. Uh, within one TAD. So this SOX9 TAD here uh, has two nice boundaries, TAD boundaries, and uh, these uh, sex reverse duplications uh, increase the copy number within these TAD. And the other two, they are inter TAD duplications. So they extend through, uh, through sequences in the, in the neighboring TAD, in the KCNJ TAD, and also include a TAD boundary. And we were wondering um, how do these duplications uh, change the uh, 3D chromosome? chromatin structure and does this explain the diverse phenotypic outcomes at the locus? So um, using targeted approaches um, uh, with a traditional LOXCRE uh, uh, system, recombination system, also CRISPR-Cas3 uh, generated these applications also in the mouse and then we studied uh, the changes in the touch structure and the effect on gene regulation. And uh, I show you mainly the results we generated from uh, the LIMPATs. Uh, so uh, we used the LIMPAT as a, as a developmental system and we checked um, these three types, these three uh, mouse mutants um, uh, uh, in LIMPAT tissue because both genes are expressed there. So KCNJ2 and Zepamab. Okay, um, first uh, to the capture, to the high C data we generated from uh, the intertat duplication. So what you now can see here, um, so the overlapping part here uh, uh, shows you um, the, uh, the, uh, the extent and the position of the duplication, okay? This is in tandem. And so here you see the profile from, from this mouse mutant. You can't see that much in, in, this, uh, in this picture, but if you do the subtraction of the wild type signal, then you see uh, the effect uh, of this duplication. So you see um, an increased interaction um, of this duplicated region with the whole, ex with the whole, with uh, all sequences uh, within the uh, SOX9 TAD, so within uh, the orange TAD. So the SOX9 gene uh, shows increased context with this region. On the other hand, um, the inter TAD duplication that spans a TAD boundary. Uh, if we do the subtraction, then we see only uh, interactions that are confined to the duplicated part. But we don't see uh, any ectopic interactions with regions outside this duplicated part. Okay? And this is a, a huge, uh, a major difference because here in this case, um, we assume that uh, the sex reversal is induced uh, by uh, overexpression of SOX9, and this we can see that uh, overexpression is probably in induced by increased interactions uh, of this region that is known to be uh, responsible in humans. And okay, um, but now um, what, what is it, what we see here? So we only see uh, interactions that is confined to the duplicated sequence. And we uh, defined this now uh, as a self-interacting domain and we, we claim that this is a, a new tab that is formed because of the duplication of the boundary. And I just want to show you um, uh, also four CSEC results to better demonstrate uh, what happens in this uh, mouse mutant. So here you see the interaction profile in the wild type. So we have a viewpoint in the SOX9 gene and nice here in, uh, in, uh, in brown, um, the SOX9 TED and here the KCNJ TED in blue. And if we do the same experiments in this inter tab duplication from the viewpoint SOX9 and from the viewpoint uh, of KCNJ2 and then do the ratio to the wild type, we don't see uh, the extra copy induced by this duplication. So where is it located? Where is this uh, extra copy uh, of, uh, of induced by the duplication? And um, I, uh, in my studies, um, I placed a, a viewpoint at the breakpoint of the duplications and at the breakpoint we have a LACSEP reporter. So I placed a, a viewpoint specifically uh, uh, in the um, LACSEP promoter. So it's a least specific 4C. And um, what we can see now is actually a third domain. And this is uh, the hidden um, um, additional copy induced by the duplication. 
And um, additionally, in this mouse mutants, and this is um, um, in line with the human with the human phenotype, so we don't see any changes uh, in gene, gene expression. So SOX9 and KCNJ, KCNJ, they don't contact this extra region, and they, we also see no changes. And um, but yeah, with this profile, we see another domain, and then we ask, okay, does this domain has any regulatory potential? So what is what what is the sequence within this domain? And here um, again, the model, um, just to make it more clear. So here is the KCNJ TED and the SOX9 TED, and we have here I have a mouse mutant with a Lexet reporter here in the in the SOX9 TED, and then we have the, our mouse mutants with uh, the KCNJ TED, the SOX9 TED, and with the new domain between them. But in this new domain, there is a Lexet reporter, and then I just made um, some Lexet stainings. And uh, here's the, the result for the SOX9 TED. So the like that gene in the wild type nicely reca recapitulates most of the expression patterns of SOX9 in this, uh, yeah, especially in the skeletal, skeletal um, um, elements. And uh, the uh, Laxet reporter in this new chromatin domain or NeoTED uh, also shows this um, activity. So the NeoTED uh, contains a lot of cis-regulatory information. Um, in our paper, we showed, so we claim that the new chromatin domain uh, um, um, is form, or, uh, for, uh, forms, and we had uh, several lines of evidence to demonstrate this, that this is indeed spatial um, uh, insulated. Uh, I want to show you just one experiment. Um, I think that I really like it because it's a really crazy allele. I mean, just demonstrate what's possible with CRISPR-Cas today. So we see that um, this, we see a new domain, and this domain only interacts um, with itself, with the duplicated sequence, because it's uh, uh, spatially insulated from the rest of the genome. And then we ask, okay, here in this picture, um, we have this uh, new domain, this NeoTED, and it's flanked by two boundaries, by the, duplicate, well, by the duplicated boundaries. And classically, these boundaries are associated with CDCF site, and we use this uh, duplication allele and just deleted um, the, the boundaries and then checked uh, on uh, what happens to the chromatin architecture and gene regulation. And if we delete the boundaries, so now you see here the, the subtraction um, to, uh, to, uh, of the boundary deletion to the normal duplication. And we see, um, first of all, a uh, um, loss of insulation of this, uh, of this new, uh, for newly, newly formed um, um, domain. So we see increased interactions uh, with the neighboring TETs. So KCNJ2 and 16, they get in close, closer proximity and also SOX9. And here, uh, marked with these two asterisks, um, the, the uh, duplicated sequence itself is now able to contact uh, each other. So if we lose TAT boundaries, the whole structure is getting looser. And um, this, uh, uh, loss of insulation also results in gene misregulation. So now we see uh, with this TAT boundary deletion um, that these regulatory sequences um, within the NeoTAT is able to drive uh, uh, misexpression of KCNJ2. Okay, last, um, I just want to refer to the last application. And yeah, having this uh, concept uh, of a new domain in mind, um, now we are looking at um, these green duplications that are associated with Cook syndrome. And I already introduced that uh, these um, duplications extend further centromeric. Uh, they are similar to, uh, to the non-phenotype duplication, and, but they include now KCNJ2. And what happens is very simple. We see the same picture if we do the HiC on this mouse mutant, but now we have one copy included uh, within uh, this neotet. So we have the KCNJ TED, we have the SOX9 TED, and we have the NeoTED, but this time, due to the size and the relative position to the KCNJ2, we have also one copy incorporated in this NeoTED. And now um, we see again um, that this copy gets um, 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 uh, upregulated, and this upregulation is due to a misexpression uh, in a SOX9 like pattern. So here in wild type, we see uh, the normal expression pattern of SOX9 in the in digit anlagen. Uh, um, then in DOPC, nothing changes. So SOX9 is outside, don't cares about, does not care about 
uh, this copy number or this duplication, and then one copy here in the dupc uh, adopts this expression pattern. And this uh, uh, this we already saw uh, uh, from the Luxet reporter gene that the neotet has the capacity to uh, induce misexpression uh, in the digits. So the copy uh, of KCNJ2, which is within the neotet, uh, adopts the cis-regulatory cis information that originally belonged uh, to SOX9. And this, at the end, uh, also leads um, to uh, the Cook syndrome-like phenotype in the mouse. So here again, um, the Cook syndrome, the, uh, the missing uh, uh, nails uh, in the patients and uh, the brachydactyly. And here is our mouse mutant. So uh, the claws, all claws are missing. And we also see changes in, uh, in the bone morphology of the uh, distal phalanges. It's really specific. So the, these mice have re, uh, just only these, uh, uh, these two features. So missing claws and uh, the most, uh, most distal phalanges are affected. Okay, this brings me now to, um, to the concept we presented or we present. Um, so, um, at the SOX9 locus, deletions within the TAT um, uh, have an, have an uh, impact uh, on the gene, which is uh, in the same, uh, same TAT, so uh, for example, SOX9, probably, most probably due to an uh, increase of copy number uh, of an enhancer. Then in yellow, um, we have an inter-TAT inter duplication, only of a non-coding sequence. But uh, this inter-TAT duplication, of course, um, uh, also includes a boundary, and with this uh, we create a new domain, but this has no effect uh, on, on, on the organism because this regulatory information is just uh, spatially isolated and cannot interact with the, with the rest of the genome. And then in the third case, um, the, the Cook syndrome-associated applications, they are a little bit larger and include KCNJ2 and 16, uh, and now um, this regulatory potential within the neotet can drive misexpression of KCNJ, KCNJ2. Okay, um, to sum up, so um, it's super, uh, re really important to, uh, to take the TAT for, uh, TATs uh, into account of our genome because they are functional modules in our genome and they can be rearranged by structural variations. And um, uh, in 2015, um, we showed that uh, deletions and inversions can cause uh, rearrangement of TATs and lead to a rewiring of enhancer promoter contacts. And uh, yeah, what I presented to you now uh, is that uh, the applications, including a TAT boundary, can form a new chromatin domain, or we call it neotat, and they retain their re regulatory potential, or they have a regulatory potential, and, and this regulatory potential is isolated from the rest of the genome. So some applications they just simply have no effect uh, because the enhancer, for example, is isolated. And then um, relative, so depending on the position uh, um, and uh, the extent of these duplications, um, you can also incorporate um, genes and those genes, they can adapt uh, the regulatory potential and drive um, uh, misexpression. So um, with using, yeah, by using this concept, um, we identified um, uh, yeah, the target gene, uh, or the, the gene, the, the disease-causing gene for the Cook syndrome. And yeah, uh, I know many cases, um, so for other structural variations and on other loci where we can apply this concept, so I think we can apply this uh, concept of neotet formation for other structural variations. And what I also like uh, uh, is that maybe it's also an, uh, an important mechanism for evolution because with these duplications, um, uh, one gene copy immediately adopts uh, um, uh, a new function, um, but um, and in addition, um, this duplication has no consequences of the old copies. So this is a quite uh, interesting uh, concept. And I just want to refer last thing uh, to to an, another publication from uh, Jan Korbel in, in Heidelberg, and then they published in, in in November last year. Uh, a nice study uh, in colorectal cancer, and they found uh, recurrent applications here in red, and they are also spanning two TATs, so they are inter tat applications. And they come literally to the same concept, so they call it here uh, the formation of a de novo chromatin domain, we would call it a, a neotat, but it also nicely demonstrates that uh, it's also important, uh, this concept, um, 
for, for, for the formation uh, of cancer. Okay, um, I would like to thank um, Stefan Mundlos and the whole group uh, at the MPI, uh, especially Daniel Ibrahim, uh, he's co-author on the paper, and um, Dario, another postdoc, he published uh, important work before. Um, I want to thank uh, our in-house collaboration with, um, with our master facility, so people from the Hammond department. Then we have an excellent um, 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 bioinformatic uh, unit uh, in our house. So I want to thank Verena Heinrich and Robert Schöpflin and yeah, um, some other collaborators, uh, Anna Pombo from the MD MDC, Francois Spitz from uh, Amber in Heidelberg and our clinical collaborators that provide a us with the with the patient data yeah and thank you for your attention thank you very much martin um we have uh, we are transitioning now and during the transition process um, if um people from the audience have questions just um go ahead keep in mind that you are on mute currently so you have to unmute yourself Hey Martin, um, just while you are talking, I um, just thought um, about if uh, your domains, your TATs, are in any, any way uh, overlapping with uh, linkage disequilibrium pattern. Um, linkage. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not so familiar with. Um, can you can you remind me linkage linkage? Uh, Would be um, the extent of um, of. Uh, the combination you have between different uh, genomic loci. Yeah. So 